It's a story you saw first on three thousands of embryos and eggs in a cryogenic chamber potentially damaged after the liquid nitrogen tank began to thaw. Some 500 patients of University Hospital's fertility center could be impacted. Channel 3's Monica Robbins broke the story, which is now getting national attention tonight. Hi, Monica. Hi, Sarah. This is so utterly heartbreaking for these families. They put their hope and money into a program with a great success rate, and somehow the cryo system that was potentially supporting future families failed. University Hospital's Fertility Center is responsible for the births of thousands of babies. The technology helps to create families that previously had little hope. But last weekend, a tragic disaster happened. It's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. Embryologists noted that the temperature uh, had increased in the liquid nitrogen tank that stored our embryos and eggs. We don't know the reasons why yet, um, but we do know that the temperature that was measured at a portion of the tank was higher than our acceptable limits. The temperature increase may have impacted more than 2,000 eggs and embryos, affecting more than 500 patients. The tanks, similar to these, have multiple monitors and sensors that should set off alarms if there's a temperature flux. They can even be remotely monitored. They don't know yet if there was a mechanical failure or human error. We've actually engaged an outside expert to analyze and do an in-depth drill down to see what actually happened. The top of the tank is where the temp increase occurred. And the bottom temperature stayed at the proper uh, levels. So we are currently uh, looking at uh, what specimens exist in that gradient. The specimens were not in a dated order. They were mixed. Each vial contained two or three eggs or embryos from each patient, meaning one patient could have several vials in her name. UH overnighted letters to all patients impacted. Some of the eggs and embryos that were stored date back decades and people move, their addresses change but we've made our best attempts to track down everyone that we can. They've set up a call center to answer questions and set up appointments. The number is 216-286-9740. And we're working very, very hard to come up with more definitive answers for specific questions that they might have as it relates to their own family. Here's what we know. None of the eggs and embryos impacted by the partial thaw will be destroyed. All have been moved to another cryotank at the correct temperature. UH reported the incident to federal regulators. The fertility clinic will continue operating. What we don't know, the exact cause of the partial thaw, machine malfunction or human error. How many of the eggs and embryos are no longer viable? They must be completely thawed to determine viability, but then cannot be refrozen. There is no way to put a dollar figure on the cost of this disaster, but the hospital may waive the cost of future procedures and treatments. We are so very, very sorry. Um, we, again, um, want to do all that we can to support them, and we will stand by to answer questions and address them, understanding that we may not have all of those answers right now. University Hospitals moved its fertility center into the new Ahuja Medical Center back in 2011, and at the time, the equipment and technology was all brand new. The American Society for Reproductive Medicine says a disaster of this scale is incredibly rare. Our hearts really do go out to these patients and families who have already been through quite a process to get to this point. Is there any chance any of these would still be viable? You know, that's the big unknown. Each patient's case needs to be evaluated independently, which is why patients really need to talk to their physicians. Again, the only way to truly know is by completely thawing them, but it would stand a reason that those that were in the biggest temperature increase at the top are probably damaged. All right. Thank you, Monica. Sure. Because I don't have ovaries anymore. I don't have a sister to take eggs from, you know, or anything that looks like me. My mom's genes cannot continue. It was her only chance to have children of her own. Caitlin Gerbach is one of 700 patients who likely lost all of her embryos and eggs because of a malfunction at University Hospital's fertility center. 
Senior health correspondent Monica Robbins broke this story. And Monica, you spoke with Caitlin today, who had just this one shot at biological children. Yeah, she really did. Caitlin's story, though, is slightly different from those couples who were going through fertility or IVF treatment. Caitlin lost her chance to have children five years ago. Those eggs and embryos represented her only chance at motherhood and the only way to pass on her mother's own legacy. Caitlin Gerbach has endured more suffering in her 28 years than some would experience in a lifetime. At 13, she lost her mother to breast cancer. At 23, she learned she had cancerous tumors on her ovaries and they had to be removed, ending any chance of pregnancy. That's when she was offered the option of fertility treatment. My body tried to tell me I could be a mom, but science told me different. And I felt so blessed to be here in Cleveland to be presented with these solutions. She underwent the painful process of egg extraction and ultimately had 10 eggs and four embryos with the help of her boyfriend at the time. Three days later, the surgery put her in menopause. At 23, going through extreme hot flashes where somebody could sit next to me and feel the heat radiating off of me, um, the mood swings. She felt alone. I didn't you know, get to see my mom go through menopause. I didn't have my mom with me to talk about it. Her future lay frozen in a cryo chamber inside University Hospital's Fertility Center at Ahuja Medical Center. Caitlin drove by it every day. You know, I used to wave to them and I used to look over and I would say, you know, like, we're coming for you, we're coming for you one day. It's as, you know, silly as that sounded, I always thought that, I always hoped that they would be there waiting for me. Until she learned hers were among 2,100 inside a cryo chamber that malfunctioned. That was my whole life, was in those. I wanted nothing more to, than to be a mom. Her chances now slim. Because I don't have ovaries anymore. I don't have a sister to take eggs from, you know, or anything that looks like me. My mom's genes cannot continue. Now, Caitlin did have a chance to talk to her doctor late this afternoon and was told that several embryos that were in the tank have been thawed. None have been viable. She suggested Caitlin consider using an egg donor or an egg bank in her future fertility efforts. And tonight at 11, we'll talk to another family impacted by this tragedy and an organization that wants to provide support for those dealing with the grief of loss. And still, Sarah, no definitive cause yet on what exactly happened. The investigation's still going on. Okay, and I know we're paying attention to that. I'm sure it's hard to even just picture this new reality at this point, but has Caitlin thought about any of those options, what she'd do? You know, she literally just found out yesterday yeah. and today she talked to her doctor. However, she's already had several cousins reach out to her. Her best friend has reached out saying, you know, we will, we will give you our eggs if you need them. So Wow. She does have options. It's just going to be some time before she can decide what she's going to do. All right, Monica Robbins, you've been on this story from the beginning. Thank you. Sure. Tonight, more than 700 families are learning their chances for children are in jeopardy after 2,000 embryos and eggs were potentially compromised at University Hospital's Fertility Center. It is a story that Monica Robbins first told us about, and tonight she spoke to a couple whose dreams of having another baby were dashed by the disaster. Matt and Kathy Bowman just celebrated their twins' first birthday last weekend. Little Emma and Evan were conceived with the help of University Hospital's Fertility Center. It took the couple eight years of trying. Fifth and last try, we found ourselves with two miracle babies. They had three embryos left being stored in a cryogenic chamber like this one. They just started planning on a sibling for the twins. I want to do this again. I want to grow my family. Then they received a letter from the hospital telling them of a malfunction in the storage container. The Bowmans are among 700 families impacted when the cryo tank began to warm up. More than 2,100 eggs and embryos may have been compromised. What we've learned just in the past 24 hours is there's levels of loss involved here. And we just happen to be on a different level than some other people, but it's still a loss nonetheless. Kelly Gherkin understands that more than anyone. She started the nonprofit organization Sufficient Grace Ministries. It provides bereavement support for those who've experienced loss before, during, and after pregnancy. This is a major loss, and many, not every family might, might react the same, but so much is invested 
when a family goes through IVF and, and they don't take that lightly. They're not just pouring their money and their time and their resources, but their hearts. SGM offers support groups in Northeast Ohio for families in need. They've also created a comfort bear for these particular families and can recommend resources. But perhaps most importantly, they offer validation that grief is acknowledged. We see you, we see the hurt and the heartbreak of this and that life mattered. Now, any of the families impacted can go to sufficientgraceministries.org to find support groups and resources. And if you have questions or you want that comfort bear, just email your request to the website. As we said, you broke the story yesterday. It's getting national attention. Do we know what happened and why at this uh, point? Yeah, I, I wish we did, but mm. uh, uh, actually right now, no. The investigation is continuing. We're hoping for an update early next week. And patients may notice an increase in security at the entrance to the hospital. It's a precautionary measure. There have been no incidents at the center. Okay, Monica Robbins, thank you. Sure. Less than a week after Channel 3's Monica Robbins first broke the story, the first lawsuits are being filed against university hospitals in that case of the fertility clinic malfunction. More than 2,100 eggs and embryos have been damaged. They were damaged when a, when a tank started to warm up, and we later learned a similar problem happened thousands of miles away. Monica joins us now with an update. Hi, Monica. Hi, Russ. That's right. Another fertility center in San Francisco experienced a similar malfunction, impacting nearly 500 of their patients on the same day as the case in Cleveland. And today, another law firm went public, filing another lawsuit against the hospital. But it's doubtful any of these cases will ever go to trial. Lawsuits are piling up against University Hospital's Fertility Center after more than 700 patients received this letter last week informing them that their frozen eggs and embryos may have been damaged when a cryo storage tank malfunctioned. Just thinking about the possibility of having a kid and then having that taken away from you. That same weekend, a similar problem at a different facility. In a statement, Pacific Fertility Center in San Francisco said we're truly sorry this happened and for the anxiety that it will surely cause. What our clients lost to these IVF clinics and university hospitals, you can't replace. That's why several patients are lawyering up. We have been inundated with calls from people in both Cleveland and San Francisco. We have um, dealt with cases like this before. It breaks my heart every time. We want to get to the bottom of this. We want to hold the hospital accountable. Uh, you know, apologies are nice, but they had a tremendous responsibility. In a statement, University Hospital said, we understand why some people might feel compelled to take this step. Any lawsuits being filed will have no bearing on the independent review being conducted or our determination to help patients who've suffered this loss. However, at least one lawyer doesn't expect these cases to ever go to trial. We are unaware of a single case like this that has actually made it to trial. And there is no evidence that the Cleveland and San Francisco cases are related at this point. We're hoping to hear more from UH in the next day or two about the cause of that malfunction. As more women learn their hopes of motherhood are in jeopardy because of problems at University Hospital's Fertility Center, our Monica Robbins, who broke this national story last week, is finding the fertility industry is largely unregulated. That could soon be changing. Investigators from the Ohio Department of Health were at the Fertility Center Tuesday on behalf of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, who asked them to make sure UH was in compliance with federal regulations. While CMS does regulate labs that deal with human tissue, fertility centers are not typically under Medicare or Medicaid. And that's the issue. The fertility industry is largely self-regulated. It's the Wild West. Um, these people are running operations without meaningful oversight, period. We want to make sure that that changes. UH voluntarily allows the College of American Pathologists to inspect the lab every two years. They were contacted March 9th and began their investigation the same day, but again, it's voluntary. There is some regulatory fabric out there, but no one is telling us how they followed it, what they followed, or what was beyond their control. Robert DiCello is representing dozens of clients in lawsuits against university hospitals. 
In a statement, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine said when the Fertility Center completes its full investigation and we learn what went wrong, we'll work with our member clinics to help them take any steps needed to ensure such an event never happens again. But again, no actual regulation. And two years ago, ASRM created recommendations for the development of an emergency plan for in vitro fertilization programs. In it, it suggests patients sign informed consent prior to storage, that the clinic will make efforts to maintain the cryopreserved state, but the program can't be held responsible due to natural disasters or other emergencies beyond the control of the clinic. This case may prompt new laws, but before that happens, DiCello hopes the lawsuits get things started. The lawsuit can make the change when the judge orders UH to make new rules, follow new procedures um, ordered by the judge that satisfy everyone's concerns. And still no update from the hospital about a specific cause to the malfunction. However, I did talk to the chair of the Partnership for Families charity organization. They pay for fertility treatments for women in need. Nikki Schaefer is donating four embryos she had stored at another facility to women who might need them from this tragedy. And she's requesting other women do the same. We'll have more on her story tomorrow.